the notion of uh, the following notion to so a definition let i be an indexing set so it may be uh, finite it may be countable it may be uncountable it can be anything okay so a family of sets E i, i in i. So E i is in R n or omega or wherever you are. Okay. So, okay, is locally finite. If for every x in R n, there exists a neighborhood. of x which intersects only finitely many of the sets yeah. okay okay so We now state a theorem. I will not be proving this. Uh, the proof you can find in the appendix of the book which I cited earlier. And it's a standard theorem which uh, follows because of what is called the paracompactness of the Euclidean space. And so this is called locally finite C infinity partition of unity okay so what does this mean so there are a lot of words which need explanation anyway let me first state the theorem so let omega in rn be open and let omega equals union i in i omega i omega i open also Then there exist C infinity functions phi i, i in i, uh, C infinity on omega, of course, such that the following hold one support of phi i is contained in omega i for every i. 2. The family support of phi i i in i is locally finite. 3. 0 less than or equal to phi i x less than or equal to 1 for all x in omega for all i. And 4 sigma i over i phi i i of x is equal to 1 for all x in omega. Okay. Okay, so now, so this is a theorem which I will not prove, but uh, we one can uh, find the proof in uh, the reference which I gave you. So, why do we call it a locally finite C infinity portion of unity? Okay, it is C infinity, all the functions are C infinity. They are locally finite because the supports of these functions are locally finite. Now, the last condition here needs some explanation because I told you i can be a finite countable or uncountable set. So, how do we define the sum here? Now, given any x, then every x has a neighborhood which intersects only a finite number of these uh, sets support of phi i. So, that means for every x, there exists a neighborhood such that phi i x is not 0. Uh, so, for, uh, so, so, for every x, 
we have phi x is not 0 for at most finitely many i ok ok so the at most finitely many i and therefore this is in fact just a finite sum because you have a neighborhood which will inter intersect the supports of only finitely many of these functions phi i. So for all those for which it does not intersect the support phi i of x is automatically 0 and therefore you have that this is non-zero only for finitely many and therefore the sum makes sense and therefore you can uh, define it and uh, it is always equal to 1 and because you have taken the constant function 1 and broken it up as a sum of uh, c infinity functions you call it a c infinity function uh, c infinity partition of unity okay so that is the meaning of the statement okay so now as a simple corollary we have let omega contained in rn be open and k contained in omega compact then there exists phi in d of omega. So, remember d of omega are c infinity functions with compact support contained in omega. So, there exists phi in d of omega such that phi is identically 1 on k. So, you can construct such functions. Okay. So, now you have k is contained in omega. This is compact. That means from the separation properties like T3 and so on, you can uh, T3, T4 and so on, uh, Rn is uh, metric space is normal, uh, uh, T3 etc. And therefore, you can find U such that K is contained in U, contained U closure this thing and U closure this compact. So, you say U is relatively compact. So, u is open. So, we can find always given a compact set, we can cover it by a relatively compact open set which is still contained in omega. So, now you consider the uh, covering of omega. It has only two sets namely u and omega minus k k is compact so it is close so omega minus k is open u is open and together these two cover the uh, thing. So, the c infinity function partition of unity well we do not have to worry about locally finite because we have only two sets which is finite. So, you can find functions phi and psi belong to c infinity of omega support of phi is contained in u and support of psi is contained in omega minus k and you have in fact phi plus psi is identically equal to 1. So, this means that on uh, k support of psi is in omega minus k. So, psi is identically 0 this implies phi is identically 1 ok. Further support of phi is contained in omega ok uh, sorry it is contained in u which is contained in u closure which is compact and therefore support of phi is also compact and therefore phi belongs to d of omega. So, this proves the theorem. Now, you can uh, modify this You can also, so as an exercise you can try. So, if you have k1, k2 contained in omega compact and disjoint, then there exists a phi in d of omega such that phi is say identically 1 on k and phi is identically 1 sorry uh, say minus 1 on uh, on k1 and k2 and minus 1 less than equal to phi less than equal to 1 for all x in omega phi of x 
okay one can one can use the following uh, corollary to do this so you see the function uh, the space d omega is very rich so now we want to uh, put a topology on d of omega and then we will uh, take the dual which will make it a topological vector space and then we will take the dual space of that so that is our uh, next uh, object okay 